William Hillman had been developing velocipedes of various types for quite some time, initially with the Coventry Machinist Company, and then as a partner of Hillman, Herbert, and Cooper, and finally founding the Hillman Codelin Company in 1907 to focus specifically on motor cars. The first cars were quite large and fast, but Codelin would leave to join Sunbeam in 1909, and once his name was dropped from the company, the cars would move significantly down market. Hillman would see their first real success with the 9-horsepower model, introduced in 1913, a car that used a 1400cc inline 4. It would be replaced by the more successful Model 11 in 1920 with a bigger 1600cc engine. Sadly, William Hillman would die the following year. As he had six daughters and no sons, the company would be taken over by his son-in-law, John Black, who would later go on to become chairman of Standard Triumph. But the Hillman Company would continue on, with a focus on convertible models, at least until they introduced the Model 14 in 1925, of which Hillman would make approximately 11000 by 1930, as they were able to undercut the prices of smaller cars. In 1928, they would be taken over by the Roots Brothers, and paired with Hummer, the intent was for Hillman to be the entry-level brand for the upmarket Hummers, but Hillman was a bit slow to move further down market, and Roots would continue to offer more Americanized cars. With the all-new Hillman Wizard of 1931 being intended for international markets, which had a bigger six-cylinder, as was now expected in the mid-priced field, meaning a more deluxe version of the Wizard would be offered a year later, when the Minx was also introduced which would be the first mass-produced car with a full synchro mesh transmission. The Wizard would evolve into the Hawk in 1936, but none of this had helped move Hillman closer to becoming an entry-level brand. So starting in 1938, higher-end Hillmans would become Humbers, with the Hillman Hawk becoming the Humber Snipe and the Hillman 16 becoming the Humber 16, all of which helped Roots expand as a major exporter as well as gain popularity throughout Britain, meaning that when the war broke out in Europe, they would be among the first involved with Britain's shadow factories, which were just factories used to quickly expand military production for the war, and they would be involved in reconstruction as early as 1940, while being Britain's biggest producer of bombers, which enabled them to quickly return to Minx production after the war, and give it a modern styling update in 1948. It was slightly bigger at 158 inches long on a 93-inch wheelbase and weighing about 2,000 pounds, with a 1.2-liter inline 4 pumping out 38 horsepower and 48 pound-feet of torque. The car helped Hillman expand production outside the UK, with a new factory in Australia and production in Japan by Isuzu. And starting in 1954, a tall wagon, or van version, was offered called the Hillman Husky. The Minx would see another new series introduced in 1956, once again slightly bigger and more powerful, now 161 inches long on a 96 inch wheelbase and weighing 2200 pounds, with a 1.4 liter inline 4 with 51 horsepower and 70 pound feet of torque. Designs were now being shared across the Roots Group brands, which also included Singer, as well as Sunbeam and Humber. The Minx would be joined by the Super Minx in 1961, a slightly bigger car being 165 inches long on a 101 inch wheelbase and weighing 2300 pounds, and initially powered by a 1.6 liter inline 4 with 66 horsepower and 86 pound feet of torque. The Imp of 1963 was a revolutionary new small hatchback with an 875cc overhead cam aluminum rear engine. It was 139 inches long on an 82 inch wheelbase, weighing under 1600 pounds with 42 horsepower and 56 pound-feet of torque. Racing successes helped annual sales exceed 50,000 by its second year, but reliability issues caused sales to drop rapidly, and soon strikes and warranty claims had roots in financial trouble, being saved to some degree by Chrysler buying 30% stake in the Roots Group in 1964, which ended Hillman's association with Isuzu. There began to be extensive sharing of models, depending on where they were to be sold, such as the Singer Gazelle being sold as the Hillman Gazelle in some markets. 
and the new Minx now being a lower content version of the Hillman Hunter, also being sold under other names such as Arrow or Hustler, as well as being offered as a Singer, Sunbeam, Humber, Dodge, or Chrysler, depending on the market. Chrysler would have full control of the Roots Group by 1967, making it Chrysler of Europe starting in 1970. About the same time, they would introduce the Hillman Avenger, the first Chrysler Europe developed car. Another car that would be sold across all divisions in varying markets, including as the Plymouth Cricket in the U.S. It's a fact. Chrysler Plymouth offers more kinds of new cars than anyone else, including Duster, Satellite, Roadrunner, Fury, Chrysler, and now a new entry in the subcompact field. The little car that can. New Cricket from Plymouth. Has four doors and gives you family-sized room. Gives you good gas economy. And as the Dodge 1500 or 1800 in South America. There would even be a short-lived sporty version called the Tiger. And the Avenger would be one of the most successful British cars of the 70s. But it was essentially the end of Hillman. Although it wouldn't be the only car that Chrysler Europe developed and brought to the U.S. With Chrysler's financial woes in the late 70s, Chrysler Europe was sold to PSA Peugeot Citroën, and all remaining models were consolidated under the revived Talbot brand in 1979, including the Avenger, although Talbot would only last until 1985 before being phased out. Chrysler Argentina, who had been making a version of the Avenger as the Dodge 1500, would be taken over by Volkswagen in 1980 and they would continue to make a variation of the car under their own name until 1990. Of course, PSA Peugeot Citroën and Chrysler Corp have recently merged to create Stellantis, but it's unlikely Hillman or any of the Roots Group brands will ever be revived. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below.